Well, this is a good question, the childhood. I, I get this question quite often. You know, how do, how do we account for uh, the various kinds of childhood cancers? Um, the number one cancer killer of children is high-grade gliomas. This is, uh, is well known. Um, well, what we, what we know, the, or, all, the origin of all major cancers comes from a chronic disrup disruption of oxidative phosphorylation coupled to a compensatory uh, glutamine glucose-driven fermentation, energy without oxygen. How does this happen in a child in, in, a, in a young child, sometimes this can initiate in utero and the, and the child is born and recognized soon after birth or in the first year of life to have a tumor. Um, what we know about the tumor, uh, like we know about a lot of cancers, there's a lot of genetic mutations in, in some of these tumors and in some of the tumors there's no genetic mutations. But what we do know is that every cell in that tumor, whether it initiated in a child, uh, an adolescent, uh, a young child, an adolescent, or an adult, they have a similar patho uh, pathophysiological problem. That is, they are fermenting. They're generating a significant amount of energy coming from uh, non-oxygen sources, like fermentation. How did this happen? It happened by some sort of a developmental abnormality early, in, early that would create uh, intermittent hypoxia blocking oxygen or disrupting the ability of the mitochondria to function uh, in an oxidative capacity at an early stage of development. There could be any number of risk factors, something that would be uh, passed through the uterus, the transplacental uh, barrier. Uh, it could be a carcinogen, a virus. It could be simply a developmental anomaly. Whatever it is, when a population of cells is growing and their oxidative phosphorylation capacity is chronically interrupted, uh, then you would get a, a compensatory switch to a fermentation metabolism. Because obviously if the, if the damage is acute, the cells will die and not become tumor cells. So whatever, whatever that developmental anomaly is, uh, whether it's caused by a carcinogen, a virus, or simply a developmental problem, any one of these things could lead to uh, 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 chronic damage to oxidative phosphorylation with compensatory fermentation, regardless of what the, the mutations happen to be. We know there are certain childhood brain tumors, the ependymoblastoma, certain types of ependymoblastomas have no, muta no recognized mutations, yet they are growing dysregulated uh, with a fermentation uh, metabolism. What we're seeing now is a greater number of people getting cancer in young adults I would say, in the late 20s, 30s, and early 40s, we're seeing large number, much larger numbers than in the past. Uh, these are early. Cancer had always been recognized as more common in older folks, over 50, 60, 70 years of age, uh, where cancers were recognized uh, during those times in, in people. But when we look at cancer metabolically, regardless of the age of onset, regardless of the gender, uh, we find the same common pathophysiological problem, which is a dependency on a glucose glutamine driven fermentation. So whether the child, whether the brain tumor or the cancer arises in a very young child or an adolescent or a young adult or um, a senior citizen, the, the therapy should be the same. Uh, the, 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 that is targeting the glucose and glutamine while transitioning to uh, a ketone body. So. So we, we, we know what the underlying problem is. It just happens uh, at, at different times of the life. And what, what's really remarkable is how all these young adults uh, with colon cancer, lung cancer, breast cancer, uh, all these types of cancers, uh, there is clear evidence from something in our diet and lifestyle. It's not, a, it's not an inherited condition. These are foundational changes in diets and lifestyle that are leading to a greater damage to a chronic damage to a population of cells in some organ or tissue uh, leading to dysregulated cell growth and is what we know as cancer. So, so we are familiar with how cancer arises. Uh, we are familiar with uh, the, how to prevent it because we, if we shut down the fermentable fuels and transition the body off to non-fermentable fuels, we can clearly restrict uh, and, and, and reduce the rate of, of growth. And then a possible resolution through uh, a, a minor surgical procedure, uh, a radiation treatment, or even a low-dose chemo 
uh, can uh, uh, facilitate, potentially facilitate a resolution uh, without toxicity. Once we realize that this is a metabolic problem and we simply adjust the treatments and procedures to the age appropriate, to the age related uh, situation that we're, we're dealing with. So um, yeah, cancer incidence is on the rise, uh, but the strategy for managing cancer is also on the rise, uh, a non-toxic management. So I, I think we, once we realize it's a metabolic disease, I, I think we'll be able to uh, significantly improve overall survival and quality of life, regardless of whether the individual with the cancer is a very young child, uh, whether it's an adolescent, uh, a young adult, or even a senior citizen.